Boys swimming 25 meters away from securing the Section 5 record for the most consecutive titles, and they do it in style. 18 straight for the Class A champs. They broke sectional Class A meet time record by two full seconds in this 400 yard free relay. Welcome to a special edition of Section 5 Live for AJ Felton. I'm Alexa Ross. That's right. Sectionals for basketball and hockey are right around the corner. Hockey is underway. Some great highlights for you tonight. But before we get ahead of ourselves, as we just saw, Pittsburgh locked up their 18th consecutive Class A title, setting a new Section 5 record. They finished the meet with 512.5 points. They won seven events, including what you just saw, the 400-yard free relay. Congratulations to them and everybody else heading to states. Yeah, and the, the Pittsburgh girls doing that in the, in the fall as well. They had Pits to catch up and they got there. Good yeah, for them. Yeah, so now they can just keep going back and forth. That will be perfect. To, exactly. Now let's switch over to games that will start their sectional journey next week. They've been the class of Section 5 basketball in the girls' side for quite a while now. Bishop Carney. They've been doing a lot of success, a lot of winning lately, but they still have one more rung they must climb on that ladder and to meet the expectations that they set for themselves a few years ago. When a trio of Bishop Kearney 7th graders, Saniya Wilson, Mariana Freeman, and Camille Wright emerged on the scene four years ago, they had some pretty lofty goals. In 12th grade or even 11th or 10th grade, we could each be averaging like 30 points a game. And even though they're not putting up 90 points a night, so far everything is going as planned. The Kings have made the state semifinals the past two seasons and are gunning for more this time around. We want to finally be able to win and get that title for ourselves and just be able to like feel that other sense of like accomplishment. They'll certainly be battle tested. 13 of the team's 19 games this year have been against state ranked teams and they've gone 11 and 2. Personally, we just don't want to face a better team in the postseason than we face during the regular season. Like, this is the only way to prepare for it. While the team is filled with players getting college looks, no one's getting more attention than Wilson, who is currently the 12th ranked forward nationally in her class. Honestly, it just kind of motivates me to, me to go like even harder, because now I can go even further if I work harder. It's just good to see that what I put in, I get something out of. She opens the game for the rest of us. You know, when she gets going down low, that allows the guards and the shooters to be wide open and hit the open through. And even if the fifth time isn't the charm for the talented group of juniors at States, they still have one more year to run it back. They will certainly be a team to keep an eye on, and certainly a team to talk about, which is exactly what we're going to do right about now. Absolutely. Usually we pick our teams of the week, but since sectionals are fast approaching, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to pick our favorites to in uh, for one favorite and one favorite for both boys and girls in, in basketball, also our sleepers. And as you just saw them, my favorite for the girls basketball will be Bishop Carney. You've already heard, literally you just heard a bunch of my reasons why I think they're going to be pretty good this postseason. But here's a few more not named in that story. Taylor Norris, a, a junior forward as well. She is a great compliment to Saniya Wilson down low. They have just been dynam dynamite down the stretch. They've been playing great down the stretch. They've already gone through the gauntlet in Section 5 this regular season. They beat Penfield by 12 late in the regular season. They beat Mercy by 23. A few weeks ago, they also beat them earlier in the season. And they've also beat a ton of great teams from outside Rochester. The team is focused, the team is motivated, and I expect them to take home the double A title. Well, I'm going to move to Class A because I am all in on Irondequoit girls. They are the top seed in Class A for the first time since 2011. They've won 15 of their last 16 games, and they have the Section 5 leading scorer in Alana Page. We talk a lot about her. She's averaging 29 points per game. She put up 47 on senior night. That's not even her career high. She <laughs> not really, even her season high. It's not even a season high. She is incredible. She is one of the most fun players I've ever been able to watch. But she's also complimented by strong forwards in Morgan Nicholas and Leah Mehmet, which is really great to see that it's not just Alana dominating, but all of that together has been so, so good. They have the first round by, obviously. They'll play the winner of Churchill, Chilai, and Brighton, and they will most likely play number two Menden in the final, which will definitely be a game to watch, but I definitely think Arondacord is the one to is the one who's going to lock that up. Yeah, Menden versus Arondacord, I think that is a game that a lot of people have on their schedules where you know, with all due respect to the other teams, we're kind of hoping they can meet up in the playoffs. They haven't met in the regular season. That would be a really fun one to watch. They've been so fun separately to watch, and I'd love to see the matchup, the matchups that will occur. Actually, at the last Rondequoit game, the Menden girls were there scouting. I'm sure. So being able to watch them watch, you saw them kind of just being very, um, 
they were paying a lot of attention. They were really seeing what Alana can get done both in the paint and on the perimeter. She's, you know, I, you could tell watching her play that they were, they were just floored. And at this point in the season, Alana Page has had to deal with a lot of that attention. And in that 47 point game, you said that she wasn't even cooking early on. No, she didn't start, she didn't start scoring until two minutes left in the first quarter. And then she just rattled off four consecutive threes in four consecutive possessions. And I said, oh, okay, she's here. That's what she does. But yeah, no, it'll be class can't hold A. hold her down for long. No, you can't. Class A and class double A are going to be a lot of fun. What about boys? Well, for boys, um, first, I think we're going to move to our sleepers here for the girls. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Yep, so now we're going to go to our sleepers for the girls' side. I've got the Paul Mac Red Raiders. They are 16-4. and four the fourth seed in the B1 bracket. They're coming in hot, 7-1 and one in their last eight games. Their only loss was that last game of the season, a close six-point defeat to Pena, and who's also another really good team. The main reason why I like them, they are the only team this season to have Waterloo's number. They are the number one seed in that bracket. They're 18-2. and two. Those only two losses are to the Red Raiders, a three-point win on Valentine's Day, a one-point win earlier in the season in January. They have got the senior leadership. Andra Savage and Katie Smythe both averaging over 10 points per game. They could be dangerous. I like their chances. And now I'm going to take it in class C2. Wheatland Shiloh. They are a lot of fun. The Wildcats are 15 and 5, making them the fourth seed in class C2. They're on a six, they had a six game win streak snapped. They lost their final two games of the season. One of those was a five point loss to Notre Dame Batavia. But you know what they say you can't get too hot too fast. So, they won the class D1 title in 2017-2018, so they'd be going through their second title in three years. They were knocked out in the class C3 semis last season to South Seneca, but four starters are returning this season for sectionals. Not to mention those are four of their six players in total on their roster. Yeah, we will have a lot more on them next <laughs> week on Monday. Uh, I got the chance to talk to them earlier this week. And that South Seneca team that they got knocked out to last team, that is their first round opponent for this playoffs. So that'll be another uh, a rivalry game matchup to watch in the first round of the playoffs. And uh, yeah, Wheatland and Shiloh, they've got a great story, which you'll be uh, hearing about next week. Absolutely. So now we move on to boys. <laughs> AJ, who do you have? Well, they have been the class of Section 5, in my opinion, all season long, and that's why I've got them as my favorite to win East. The East Eagles, they are ranked fourth in the state right now. Big wins all throughout the season, taking down leadership late in the season. They're one of the top teams in the other Class A region. They beat Park School out of Buffalo earlier this season. They're still ranked fifth in the state. Now, Justice Ross Simmons, he's missed the last few games after getting hurt against Eni Douglas. I don't think they're going to get him back anytime soon is what I've heard, but big other guys have been stepping up. Zachary Harris-Smith, Harris-Scott, excuse me, all throughout the season, of course. Carly Barley, Damani Barley, Ty McCullough and Freddie Brock, they've been the guys who've really been kind of stepping up without Justice Ross Simmons. They can throw a lot of guys at you. Their toughest competition, probably going to be North Star Christian. They're good, you know, 19-1. and one. A lot of wins on their resume this season, but I don't just, I'm not sure if they can match up with the Eagles, Eagles? in that playoff game. They're incredibly fun to watch. They're really fun to watch. They're really fun to watch, and watching them just move all over, you can tell they have a system for everything that they do. And, um, and not only can they put up a lot of points, as which we've seen right there, they can really play some lockdown defense in the crutch time of these games, which is how they beat Park, how they beat Leadership. So they have the full package, that's for sure. That's how they're going to beat North Star, too, probably. We'll see. And I am going to take Leadership, who actually recently lost to East. They are number two in Class A1. They have Maurice McKinney. He's arguably one of the best point guards in Section 5. He averages over 20 points per game. He has been incredible. What he is able to do with playmaking and getting things done, he is just he's incredible. And he's complimented really well with Kenny Hardiman. He is a shooter. He is he has the best jump shot in Section 5, in my opinion. But these guys are battle tested. They have two wins over U Prep, who are number two in Class AA. Mo put up that buzzer beater over McQuaid, but they do have the bad stuff. Two losses to Aquinas, two other losses to Rush Henrietta in East. They did almost upset East in the sectional quarterfinal last season, but they'll play the winner of Spencerport Cannon Dagua next Saturday. So I definitely think that they can avenge East. We'll have to keep an eye out on uh, on that one. And you mentioned Mo McKinney. Not only can he score the ball really well, he does get his teammates involved. Kind of the, the real true point guard you like to see out of, your, uh, out of your number one. His court vision is incredible. Just being able to see what he can do and the plays that he can make and just spread the ball around. He's, you know, that's why he's so fun to watch. And I'm really excited to see what he does under pressure. 
Now we move from the teams at the top of the brackets, probably not any surprises we've listed so far, to our sleepers. And I have got Brockport. They are under 500 this season, just 9 and 11. However, they have been playing some good basketball down the stretch, staying into some close games against some really strong competition. Just recently, their last game of the season, a six-point loss at Menden. The game before that, a four-point loss at Victor. Those are two really impressive teams. Now they're going to face uh, Menden in the first round of the playoffs, so that'll be a tough one. But their wins, they all got, they got some wins as well. Greece Odyssey, Athena, Honeywell Falls Lima, all some really quality teams. They've been trying to find their groove. They've been getting into these close games. I think if they can just find that next step, they might be a team that can uh, go far in the postseason. We're going to take it from a losing record as a sleeper to a winning record that's still not that great. I have Hilton. They are the sixth seed in class double A, 12 and 8. Most one of the biggest reasons I chose them is they snapped Victor's perfect season in overtime. Just shows that they're able to get it done in high pressure situations. They bounced back from a six game losing streak mid season and they've won five of their last six. All of those but one were double digit wins. So they're really figuring it out down the stretches, which is when they're supposed to be able to. They also have Tajay Hill. He is a defensive force. He is pressure. He is speed. Also has great court vision. You can see him against a pick and roll like it's nobody's business. Pull up jumpers. He can score from everywhere. And he is approaching 2,000 points. So if they can make a couple wins here, I think he's going to be really motivated to get to that 2,000 point margin. Which will be great, especially it'll look great when he uh, goes to Niagara. Committed there. The first round is against number 11, oh, Edison Tech. It should be an easy advance to meet either Bishop Carney or Rush Henrietta, but they do have a lot of secondary scoring outside of Tajay Hill. They have Jason Story, Najir Daniels, and Colin Burkus. So, you know, another really well-rounded team. Yeah, and that game against Victor, really impressive the way they were able to rattle Victor down the stretch. That's going to be one thing to watch how, you know, teams perform under clutch time. And in, in, uh, in overtime of that game, Tajay Hill, he was just making free throw after free throw after free throw. I believe it was eight for eight from the line in that overtime session. That's what you need. You need your big time players to make big time plays. And certainly he's a guy who can kind of put, put the team on his back and uh, move them throughout the postseason. And we'll see what he can do in sectionals. Let's switch over to hockey. Just about into the semifinals. Let's take a look at Class A. So you have the top seed Victor against number nine Gates Chilai. Victor wins four to two. What did you see out of this one, AJ? Well, now, Victor, it was kind of a slow start for the Blue Devils. They've kind of had a slow end to the regular season as well, losing their last two games of the regular season. They are obviously one of the best teams. I believe they're still in the top five in the state. I think they're number three right now. But if there's any time that they can be primed for an upset, it'd probably be right now. Then we move on to number four, Pittsburgh. Number five, Schrader. Pittsburgh with a 3-1 to one win. Yeah, and Pittsburgh, they were in control of most of that game for the... Uh, for the first two periods, able to get a 2-0 lead. Schrader was able to get it to 2-1, but they were able to close it out. That's a team that, Pittsburgh's a team that's they've had some really good moments, had some up and down moments. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup in the semifinals between Victor and Pittsburgh. See what Victor team shows up, see what Pittsburgh team shows up. And Fairport. Crushing Brighton HFL ER in the quarterfinal, 7-0. They've been playing some fantastic hockey. They beat Victor in the regular season and the last game. So I like the chances for Victor, or uh, for Fairport, excuse me. You just saw a nice game going to double overtime, McQuaid and Penfield. Yeah, McQuaid, a 3-2 to win over Penfield in overtime. Now that game, it was a really fun game to watch as you're seeing these highlights right now. McQuaid, they didn't really control much of the play. It was kind of Penfield's game. They were just hanging around. McQuaid was hanging around. Penfield able to take a 2-1 to lead late in that game. But right here, McQuaid gets it tied up at 2. We head to overtime. And just a couple minutes into that first overtime period, it's McQuaid ending it right here with a goal. McQuaid versus Fairport's going to be a really interesting matchup. If McQuaid can do what they did tonight, kind of keep things close, you know, hockey, just one or two bounces, you never know what can happen. But I think that Fairport is my pick to come out of the, the Class A bracket. I really like the way they've been playing lately. Let's move into Class B now, shall we? We have Webster Thomas, top seed, number nine Aquinas, 3 nothing shutout. Yeah, Webster Thomas controlling this play from start to finish with a 3 to nothing victory. They've been playing some great hockey down the stretch, too. Their last game of the regular season, just a dominating victory over Spencerport, who we'll get to later, who's the number two seed in that bracket. 
Thomas honestly should have won this game about 7-8-0, but as you're seeing right now, Lenny Perno, phenomenal in net for the Little Irish. 41 saves from the senior goaltender. He was keeping them in that game. I was amazed at the way he was able to play. And they didn't obviously come up with the win, but I just want to give props to his great performance there. Yeah, that's awesome. Now you have the number four and the number five. Hirschfeld Shiley, five. Aronikwait, four, which is actually both of their, uh, their seeding numbers. Exactly. A little bit of an upset there. A wild game down the finish. Three goals scored in the final five minutes of that game. Churchfield, Chilai, and Aronikwait. That was a really even even game as the score indicates churchville child of the saints just enough to move on in that one around scoring late just not able to get that equalizer there that's going to be an interesting game between thomas and churchville child however i think thomas is just going to have a little bit too much for the saints and then you have another one that happened just tonight spencerport and brockport spencerport number two brockport number seven that's a six four win earlier this evening. Yeah, that was kind of a weird game. Brockport scoring first, Spencerport getting three in the first period. It was three to one. Then Brockport rails off three in the second period. Some shaky goaltending there to let that happen. However, Spencerport rights the ship. They get a couple in the third period to win six to four. So they have a, a little bit of um, you know instability right there. Who knows exactly what team's going to show up next time as they'll be taking on most likely Canadagua. And Canandaigua and Notre Dame Batavia are playing right now. Last we checked, 6-1. So. so, yeah, that will be an interesting matchup in the semifinals as we assume Canandaigua is going to move on. Those teams played early in the regular season. It was Spencerport winning 5-4 over Canandaigua. So I imagine it will be another tight game as well. And it'll just uh, be a thrilling semifinal that we'll, uh, we'll have later the next week. I think it'll be a lot of fun just to see all this sectional action come to fruition. And that's all we have for you tonight. Remember, no round ball roundup tonight as, well, there's no, uh, there's no round balls to round up. Absolutely not. <laughs> but we are back next week full of sectionals coverage. And we'll be back in our normal time slot 9 p.m. Thursday next week. That'll do it for us for Section 5 Live. For AJ, I'm Alexa. We'll see you next week.